Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced, developer advocate at Dremio, and this video is to kind of give you an in-depth overview of generally how iceberg catalogs work. Um, the takeaway here is just to kind of understand like why you wouldn't want to have the same table in two different catalogs to kind of understand just like why that's a problem and just sort of how to better think through um, how to move between catalogs and how to handle situations where basically you might end up sort of in a multi sort of catalog world um, and how to think through that. Okay, so bottom line is this. Essentially what uh, there's two essentially think of all iceberg catalogs in two different categories. Okay, there are service catalogs. Okay, and generally these represent some sort of running service. Okay, so this could be like a database, so this would be like the JDBC catalog where you take any real database, and it saves the information in the database. This could be uh, Nessie, which is a running sort of service that then would also have some sort of backing store like a RocksDB or um, any kind of database. Um, that it would store the data. But the idea is that there's a running service. So this, again, this could be um, JDBC catalog, um, Nessie, REST catalog, um, AWS Glue, uh, etc. So the idea is that there's some sort of running service, and that running service generally stores um, the reference in some sort of backing database. Okay. Um, that you may or may not be aware of, okay? But the idea is that, again, the catalog, what it's doing is it's storing a reference to the metadata.json. So in this case, we'll say something like table A is pointing to v1.metadata.json, okay? And that's essentially what the catalog does. It says, okay, for this table, this is the metadata file you would want to reference when querying this table. This way you always know which is the new metadata file um, in order to make sure you're, you're scanning a consistent view of the data. So for example, let's say this I do a write to table A or some sort of update transaction to table A. What's going to happen is that it's going to create a new metadata.json once the, once the transaction is complete and then the catalog is then updated Okay, um, and then now we know, hey, going forward, use v2.metadata.json as sort of the reference to how do you scan the table. So all the information about the table is going to be in that metadata.json file. Okay, the catalog is just a way to discover where that file is. So it's going to contain an absolute path to where that file is located. So in this case, I might go hit the catalog, say, hey, where's this table? And then I'll have to make a separate trip to let's say S3 or ADLS or wherever that data is stored, that metadata is stored. Okay, so this is why sometimes um, you have to enter multiple sets of credentials because sometimes the catalog needs credentials because a catalog has some sort of authentication. But once you get that address, the address to where that, that metadata file, well, you need authentication, you need credentials to access that file where it lives. So you might separately need S3 credentials on top of the credentials you need to access, something like a, a Nessie or a JDBC store or AWS Glue, uh, etc. Okay, so just to kind of understand, again, the engine has to do two things. It has to be able to talk to the catalog and separately has to be able to talk to the storage system. Okay, so again, here we have the, the storage system. Okay. And then metadata files actually here in the storage system. Okay, so again, when we create the table, we had v1.metadata.json. Okay. And then when we updated the table, that wrote some new data files, wrote some new manifest, manifest list. And at the top of all that is the next metadata.json. So again, an engine wouldn't know by default which one it should read, okay? Because again, even though right here it's obvious, V2 should probably be the one that's read, not all metadata JSONs have such clear naming conventions, okay? It's not always like V1, V2, V3. It might be some sort of hash or timestamp. So it's not always very clear to the engine, hey, how is this thing being named and which one should I read? That's why it depends on the catalog, okay? So because the catalog tells it, hey, the one you should read for this table is V2, that's how engines like Dremio, Spark, etc., know, okay, that's the one I should read. So that way they're all scanning a consistent version of the table. 
Okay, so once the table's in storage, the question sometimes that occurs is like, how about the file storage catalog? Okay, the, the or file system catalog. And that's the other type of catalog, and this is oftentimes referred to as the Hadoop catalog. Okay, now what the Hadoop catalog does, uh, so that's there's only one. Okay, instead what happens is that in the storage, it's going to create a version hint dot text. Okay, let's just try to get that one line. Okay. And let's just extend this. Okay. And but that version text.hint is only written if the configured catalog in your engine is this file system catalog. So then what happens is that when you are using, let's say, Hadoop catalog as your iceberg catalog library, okay, then what happens is that the engine, Dremio, Spark, etc., what they're gonna do is they're gonna scan that storage. Okay, basically, wherever you're saying, hey, this table is, it's going to look for this version hint.txt, and then this version hint.txt is what's going to point it to the v2, that metadata.json. Okay, so it knows how to read the table. Okay, so what, the mistake a lot of people make is they think, okay, I wrote the table. I initially wrote it with, let's say, one of these service catalogs, and now I want to read it with my, you know, as a, as a, just a folder in my file system. Why can't I just use the file system catalog and just it recognized that table. Well, what happens is that if I were to, let's say, okay, so just for example, in Dremio, okay, um, if I were to write that table with any of these catalogs, okay, so maybe I have a Nessie catalog connected, I wrote the table to Nessie, so Nessie contains the reference to the newest metadata.json, what happens, I might also add separately the S3 where that storage is stored to my Dremio control plane, and basically then what happens is that I can go to where that catalog is. I can go to that folder where that table is written and theoretically promote it as an iceberg table. The problem is uh, the engine won't know what is the newest metadata file. Why? Because there's no version hint.txt. It doesn't, the, the file system catalog isn't aware of this catalog over here and it's not aware of the, and there is no version hint.txt for it to know, hey, this is the newest snapshot. Okay, so it's it's a sort of a different way that the catalog works. Um, generally, um, you have to be aware of that because the engine, again, isn't going to magically know. So if I were to set a file system catalog, so for example, in Spark, uh, I, there's these iceberg call procedures. You can use what's called the register table procedure. Okay, and this will allow you to move, basically say, hey, I have this catalog over here. And what I want to do is say, hey, this is the new metadata file. So what you're doing with register table, you say, hey, I want to create a new table in this catalog that already exists. And you're just telling it, hey, use this particular metadata file. So I'd be like, hey, use v2.metadata.json. Okay, when I do that, it's going to register the table, which means it'll create that version hint.txt. So that way, that catalog can refer to it, or if it was a different catalog, okay, let's say it was, I've been writing this with the file system catalog the whole time. So that's what I've been using to interface with my uh, iceberg catalog. Um, then I could point, let's say Nessie to this metadata that Jason here, and then in the backing store of Nessie, it would then create that entry of table A referencing v2.metadata.json. The bottom line is, the catalog is serving sort of one purpose. Where is that file that represents the current state of the, the table? So basically, when you connect a catalog to an engine, that catalog determines sort of how you discover that. Okay, so just because the file system catalog points to the file system doesn't necessarily mean a, a table initially written with a service catalog is going to just be immediately readable with the file system catalog. Why? Because the file system catalog depends on this version hint.txt. And that's only written if at right time you're it's intending to write it with the um, you know with the with the file system catalog. So again, in the future, this will become simpler. They're starting to deprecate catalogs, so that way there's less catalogs. 
um, and starting to standardize on what's called the REST catalog. So again, if you're not familiar with what the REST catalog is, it's a REST specification. So the idea is you would create a REST service that follows this open API specification. Um, and then basically one connector would work regardless. So you could have a hundred different catalogs and they would all use the same connector. They would all use the same logic. It would just sort of standardize that. Um, so that way there isn't as much having to think about which catalog are you using. Um, and again, you'd still have, again have to know, hey, what are the credentials for the catalog you wrote it with? Because that's where the reference is. But it becomes less having to think through like what we talk about today, where there's different types of catalogs that have different drivers and, and connectors um, that allow you to kind of discover your iceberg tables. So hopefully this clears up a, a lot in the world of catalogs. Um, again, at the end of the day, when it comes to choosing your catalog, generally you're gonna to wanna to pick a service catalog because generally these have locking mechanisms. While the file system catalog, essentially what it does, it replaces this version hint.txt on each um, update. The problem is certain stores, um, particularly like certain object stores, are not gonna have the same kind of guarantees when you're updating a file by the same name. So then what's gonna happen is that you could have multiple concurrent writes changing this version hint.txt to different files in the same folder and you can have potential consistency issues. While here, you're generally, there's a backing database that generally has lock, traditional locking mechanisms that are gonna prevent that from happening. So you're not gonna have, um, you know, multiple conflicting concurrent commits possibly hitting that table. It's just not gonna happen. Um, instead, what will happen is that a transaction will reattempt a few times if another transaction finishes first and eventually that transaction would fail, but you won't end up having conflicting changes. Um, that's what's referred to as optimistic concurrency. Um, cool, okay, I'll leave it at that and I will see y'all later.